Hey guys, it's the host of On the Couch, Josiah, and I just want to say quickly before the video starts that uh, I have a cold, so my voice may sound a little off, or I may have some here's and there, just a couple of sniffs, just a couple of sniffs, a couple of snaps. Uh, I'm sorry, I've tried cutting as much of it out as possible, so if you're wondering why I sound so weird. Also, hey, you probably like video games or whatever. I mean, you're watching a movie review about a movie about video games. So, uh, would you like to win some Fortnite mobile codes? Well, all you have to do is follow me on Twitter, tweet at me with a link to the video, and telling me your favorite part. Uh, alright, on to the video. Did I really just do a Fortnite giveaway? Fortnite for mobile, no less. How far have I fallen? You know what, I'm just gonna... Please enter my giveaway, I really need this. Catch me rolling up to Clark with one. <laughs> you found the weapon I was going to use at the school on Tuesday. <laughs> I'm definitely cutting that part out. Okay. <laughs> Hello, my name is Josiah Shoemaker, and it is time to rise and grind, gamers, because we are talking about Ready Player One. On the couch with me today is uh, Ben. Say hi every, to Ben. Every, ben to say hi, Ben. Hey guys, it's me. And we're and we're, like I've already said, and I'm already stuttering again. We're gonna we're gonna watch. We're gonna talk about Ready Player One. We're gonna do that. So there's a new segment I add to the show. It is called uh, theater experiences because every single time I go into a movie theater, there's always something off or incorrect yeah. or there's or there's something jarring. Uh, it doesn't have to do with the movie itself, more of you actually being in the building where the movie is being played. Uh, yeah, uh, m movie experience. Uh, there were so many old people. Maybe it was because we were going to a 12:50 showing on a Thursday. Yeah. We show up half an hour early, and then we get in the theater, and there's one old couple in the back, and we're like, what's this gonna be? And you know, we're sitting there, we're making jokes, and uh, another old couple walks in, I, I, and then another middle-aged couple walks in, yeah. and at this point we're like, wait, what have we gotten ourselves into? <laughs> what is this movie actually about? Am I missing something? And then there's like a, there's another group of guys that walks in that's like around that's yeah like around us, our right? age yeah. yeah and I was confused because I I think it's because the older people are like I remember Spielberg and there was also uh, something that happened uh, near the end of the movie oh uh, Ben Ben got this 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 big ass <laughs> water bottle and he drank Which was he way drank too little, expensive he he drank a little too much of it and he and he had to go wee wee <laughs> I. I mean, yeah. Don't, it, I, mean, don't I, I, drank, I don't blame it, them. It, it was, was a huge bottle. It was like a huge bottle, and I drank the whole thing. Cause you know, you're watching the movie, you're in a hot theater. You're, I'm getting thirsty, okay? <laughs> and I drink the whole thing in the first half of the movie, and then by the like, literally the uh, the 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 final battle is happening, and oh no, <laughs> I really gotta go. <laughs> and it's so bad, but. It was a series of unfortunate events, <laughs> and uh, that that was that was the experience for me. Uh, I may have missed a little bit of the ending, like just in over and over my in my overall experience, but uh, yeah. Uh, now we're gonna go over the plot summary. So uh, Undertale has to go in with Papyrus to go fix Minecraft. That's not. What happened? <laughs> All right, thank you everyone for watching. <laughs> uh, no, uh, so uh, what's the plot summary? Uh, is... Plot summary is the uh, the year is twenty forty four, and Columbus, Ohio, has actually become the fastest growing city in the world. India will be a superpower by twenty twenty. <laughs> <laughs> it's already twenty twenty forty four, and. Uh, this there's this guy. Uh, he's a pro gamer. No, he's just a gamer, uh, and he lives in the ghetto area of Columbus called the Stacks, which is basically a, a city of um, stacks of like basically trailers and RVs. Yeah. And uh, 
at this point, gaming has progressed to the point where it's all VR. Like, yeah. you, you put on your gloves, you, know, I, you I, put I, on your go goggles, and then you go into this world. I, I really wish that, uh, I, I want to live in that universe just because somehow VR is, like, doesn't cost an arm and a leg. It's yeah. not expensive. Like, this is, like, the ghetto of the ghetto. Like, this is... But, a, yeah, there, everyone there, has there, VR. There's gang violence. <laughs> there's drugs. There's everything. There's billboards, like, on people's yeah. houses. Yeah, yeah. And, uh, it's just this terrible situation, but everyone from, you know, the six-year-old kid to your 80-year-old grandma has a VR set because this, uh, the Oasis, it's called, yeah. is, uh, such a global phenomenon. So imagine VR chat, but, like, amazing. Like, yeah, that's basically like, the, what uh, it is. The, the Oasis is basically a glorified VR chat. Yeah. Uh, that also includes every other game in existence. Yeah. Uh, so, you know, when he's doing the, uh, when the movie starts its intro, it goes through all these different things that exist within the Oasis. Also, in another part, uh, so so there's the Oa Oasis, mm -hmm. and then the owner of it dies, mm -hmm. and he sets up this grand like uh, this this grand game to find uh, what was it? Three keys. Uh, yeah, it had uh, three keys, and it was a, a contest to see who could get the uh, all the keys and complete all the challenges. And if you were to do so, the first person to do so would inherit the, like, they would gain control over the entire oasis and inherit half a trillion dollars. Yeah. Uh, which is what, I, like, yeah. Yeah. Uh, so, and along the way, he makes, uh, the main character, he makes some friends. What was his name again? Uh, his, the, uh, his char his name was Wade Watts, and then in the video game world, uh, you have your avatars. And his uh, avatar's name was uh, Parsifal uh, yeah. after the medieval mythical knight. So yeah, so Parsifal basically just goes throughout the movie, just basically goes through the hero's journey. He just mm -hmm. and he uh, and he it's some wacky adventure, pop culture adventures. Yeah, he has his uh, his group of friends, uh, all of which are uh, fellow gamers. Uh, that Rise up and until grind gamers. yeah, up until the end of the movie, he's never met them in real life. Yeah. Uh, uh, yeah. So uh, with that. Uh, now we're gonna go over what we liked and what we didn't like. It's not pretentious. The movie is not. I thought this movie was gonna be. I thought it was gonna be some guy in a tie walked into a room and said, "The kids like video games and the old <laughs> people like Spielberg." Mm -hmm. um, it feels like, like the people that actually enjoy pop culture, like me and you, mm -hmm. uh, made the movie. Made the movie, and they wanted to get Spielberg because. Uh, because that's just like a huge. That, like, he's, it's Steven Spielberg. Yeah, you, you tie his name to something, and uh, it immediately becomes well known. So it's not like remember the Mario boy, remember the pink little ball. Like it's no, not, it's not like that. It's uh, there. There's subtle nods. It's not like mm -hmm. wow, it's King Kong. It's King Kong in the skyscrapers. Mm -hmm. It's more of just King Kong's there, and you know, yeah. and you're like that's King Kong. There was one. Near the ending, where I I rolled my eyes, where they said, "Here's a real gun," and they throw it. They, they yeah, throw a real yeah, gun. they're they're tossing all these uh <laughs> these weapons to the characters, and you know they're just it's a real gun. The basic weapons, you know, you would find in any video game. Uh, I also feel like there were some parts where there was pandering to the younger audience, uh, like just in the language, like. There's a scene where uh, Parsifal says, "That's rad," oh. and just it seems really <laughs> cliche. Yeah, uh, but not or in, like, like or the the Mario Kart line near or the, the end. Mario Kart line. Like, there's some lines that do feel forced and a little pandering, but the movie as a whole uh, seems more as just a, a gesture toward all of our nostalgia and just like honoring all of these things that have uh, shaped pop culture and, and video games in general. Yeah, and and a part of the pretentious part is that. Um, like like the advertisements were that were in there like like the Overwatch one stuff like mm -hmm. that like the references they obviously helped fund the movie so that mm -hmm. they could get there in there but it doesn't feel it doesn't feel out of place it feels like it's not in there it's like look exactly. it's Tracer from Overwatch guys Tracer from Overwatch is joining us on our adventure she's just there in the background and you know yeah, it's go, just a background that's the Overwatch character. lady and, and see the thing is they use these characters because they are so beloved yeah and uh, it makes sense you know in this world that someone would pick these iconic characters as their avatars because, you know, who wouldn't want to be Master Chief or, uh, who wouldn't want to be, you know, Harley Quinn? Yeah, uh, I, I, I thought that maybe, uh, Spielberg may have lost his edge. I haven't watched his, I haven't heard of any, like, recent, I know he's been producing a lot. I haven't mm -hmm. seen him direct, and I thought that 
uh, he might have been bitten by the CGI bug like George Lucas was, but he uses he uses the CGI where it's needed. Mm -hmm. um, everything that happens in the game world, like a lot, a lot of the problem I have with CG is like you can do that in real life, especially mm -hmm. with George Lucas. He 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 puts CG in places where you can easily do that in real life, mm -hmm. and it'll look better that way too. Mm -hmm. um, but Spielberg only puts it in when it's required, like when they're in the game world is the only time mm -hmm. they use it, and even when they're. Um, I can like the CG isn't bad in the real world. Like, there's no way that you can make the stacks in the real world. Yeah. There was no way that you can buy that many RVs safely and yeah. have a and whole then... thing where you come down. Like, there's a scene at the beginning where it shows off the world and he and he comes down. Yeah, and uh, he's like using ropes and uh, chains and pulleys to like, yeah. lower himself. There's no way that you can do that in the real world. Mm -hmm. And that I'm glad that he that he didn't overuse CGI mm -hmm. and he used it only where it's needed. Uh, that also leads into me saying that um, I like Spielberg. It, it is uh, he does a really good job because he does uh, a movie when you're trying to when you're trying to tell the story of a movie. You don't go look. It's the stacks. I climb up and down. He climbs. I mean, he does do some exposition, mm -hmm. but he does climb down, and you can see it for yourself. You can see that life sucks. You, mm -hmm. They don't go, man. Life sucks around here. Mm -hmm. It's more of it's it's a it's a show not tell, and yeah. that's really and that's really hard to pull off in movies. And he does it well here. Mm -hmm. And when the exposition does come in, uh, it's more giving more light to something that we, that's already been established visually. Yeah. So it show, so the stack shows that life sucks. And then his narration uh, explains to us the, the more of the backstory, the things that they can't show. Like personally, why yeah, it like sucks it, for him. Mm -hmm. So it shows that it sucks for everyone, and then for him, it sucks in this specific way. And they mm -hmm. do this throughout the whole movie, mm -hmm. and it's brilliant. I, I, there's just so many movies where they just spew exposition mm -hmm. and I'm falling asleep. Uh, that <laughs> that also leads into another point of the pacing. Mm -hmm. The pace. There was no point in this movie where I was yawning. Or, or I was waiting, or I was crossing my arms, like, do the thing. And I was... Mm -hmm. The the people that produced this did a really good job doing that. Mm -hmm. uh, I felt that uh, there's a scene in the uh, pretty much the middle of the movie, it's the middle challenge, yeah. uh, that there's a huge homage to The Shining. And yeah. I think we can all appreciate The Shining, the, uh, yeah. the, the icon that it is. Uh, but for me, that whole segment felt especially drawn out. Like... Uh, with a movie that has so many references, to have one entirely dedicated to The Shining uh, was a little weird for me uh, because it just went on so long yeah. and that specific movie just seemed a little out of place. I uh, I, I personally didn't mind it. Um, I've never seen The Shining myself. So there... And, and I have to say that for someone who doesn't... I, I get a lot of the references mm -hmm. in this movie, but I, I felt like they also made it that if you're not a, uh, a if you're not a, if you're not a gamer, mm -hmm. uh, you you can you can understand what you can still understand what's going on. It's not it's not a gamers only club. Mm -hmm. Everyone with their top or with their with their fedoras outside, <laughs> uh, petting their neck beards, saying you can't watch this movie. A guy that I don't know how Spielberg plays video games. He probably doesn't, um, and very little at that point. He was able to make a movie that. Mm -hmm still incorporates all this and that someone like someone who's older can appreciate it yeah uh and i with the older people appreciating it uh not only do modern games you know like uh the vr overwatch like all these uh new franchise uh, franchises that uh we as younger people love but uh a large part of the movie is uh older games like uh atari atari uh the atari games play a major role and especially yeah. the uh the, uh, about towards the end of the movie, yeah, and uh, and you know, there's just references throughout to these uh, older things that you know shaped what is now modern video gaming, and uh, you know, my parents would appreciate that because that's what they grew up right. with, right? And, uh, and, and it's well balanced. And it's not something like Wreck It Ralph where they're making they're making up games. There are some, there's a couple made up things, but there's just so much not made up. Is that mm -hmm. this feels real? It feels like this could actually happen. Mm -hmm. it, it's it's not um, unreal, especially the stage of video games now with VR mm -hmm. is incredible. Mm -hmm. Like, this could actually happen. Mm -hmm. uh, it's interesting to see uh, how, you know, VR has, like, in this world, it has been made so cheap and so readily available. Yeah. And I think that, you know, when you look at uh, historical trends, the more popular things become, the cheaper they will become, because uh, it just gets easier to make them. Mm -hmm. So it's very realistic in that respect. 
Uh, I feel like we should also talk about the uh, the IOI, the uh, the rival corporation. Yeah, I I would have to say that I'm glad that they put this in here because that's actually uh, you could say this is the the Black Panther for gamers, but <laughs> this is actually a thing that's happening in the video game world. We're having to fight up against these corporations, mm -hmm. pushing these empty shells of games, and then asking for even more money. Mm -hmm. uh, with microtransactions and stuff, and mm -hmm. this has become a huge controversy to the point where, like, uh, some senators want to make laws against microtransactions, mm -hmm. some microtransactions, depending um, about the game, and that's just crazy how, like, it's relevant. Mm -hmm. Like, this movie was, I'm guessing this probably took three or four years mm -hmm. to make, but the fact that it's a relevant topic, and I know it's based off of a book. Mm -hmm. I have not read the book. Ben I, is, I have not read the book. Ben so. not read the book. Um, but I have to say that that the fact that this movie wasn't a corporate show mm -hmm. just pushes that idea further of like corporations and video games. Like this doesn't feel like an empty shell mm -hmm. of a movie of saying we need to get the gamers, we need to get those gamers in those theater seats. Mm -hmm. It's actually a good movie, mm -hmm. and and the fact and just I just like the whole corporation thing. Mm -hmm. Uh, one problem that I did have with the movie, and this is relatively nitpicky, but, uh, of course, you know, when you have an old, you're also aiming towards an older audience with this, you're also trying to push certain messages on, uh, younger people as well, and sometimes some of these mes messages were a little bogged down, such as the, uh, don't tell people on the internet who you are in real life. <laughs> well, uh, I, I found that part, that was actually kind of cool because, like, there's actually, like, consequences to it. They weren't saying, yeah. now remember, kids, stay off the internet and don't use your real name. Yeah. Uh, it was it was actually being like, dude, people could be listening right now. And mm -hmm. that actually was a crucial plot point. Mm -hmm. uh, 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 those, those gosh darn anime eyes. Those oh, CG anime eyes. This this these goes huge, for me too. These huge, these huge glass marbles. Okay, so uh, you know, we I think at this point we all know the anime and manga style yeah. that, that's become so popular, and it, it's especially, a good art style, especially in pop culture. And mm -hmm. the point that um, I'm super in, into animation, and it's the point that in Western audiences we're starting mm -hmm. to get bigger eyes, and it's just it's just a thing with cartoons now where people have bigger eyes. Yeah, it's a. It's a really interesting idea, like, you, know, you look at the popularity of, you know, Dragon Ball Z and uh, uh, One Piece, and it's a beautiful art style, and I, I really appreciate it. It doesn't work well in CG, though. It, it doesn't work, like, when you're making a live-action movie... A photorealistic live-action you know, movie. Yeah, like, the CGI is, like, really, really good. Like, it looks good. It's a beautiful movie. But when you have these characters who are essentially portraying, you know, the real life version of, you know, a uh, Master Chief or a uh, or an orc, uh, it's just you can only have so many things that look real. And when you have these weird uh, elvish anime characters, it just looks really off. Yeah, uh, I feel like you know, with the hair and the ears, that's not bad. But the specifically. It is. It is the eyes. The, like the eyes. I just kept looking at their eyes the whole time. Like it. it it's distracting. Uh, and again, it is the video game world, so yeah. it would make sense. And the fact that it's CGI means it can be yeah. programmed and whatever. But uh, in the sense that you're trying to make it look realistic, it just doesn't work. Yeah. Uh, and I, I feel like that's a, a big thing. And there's really the, only the one character that makes it really obvious. Uh, Artemis. Yeah, Artemis has these uh, huge eyes. Mm -hmm. Uh, and that's and that's a little jarring. But in the intro of the movie, I almost like almost like fell out of my seat laughing because <laughs> there's this like camera shot where they're going through the oasis, and there's and they're showing off all the different games. Yeah, and there's Minecraft. But it's, but did you did you look did you notice the subtitle to Minecraft? It's Minecraft World. Right. Yeah, I was gonna point that out. So they're not just sponsoring Minecraft. They're sponsoring Minecraft's uh, subscription service for <laughs> multiplayer, which seemed a little like corporate show, like, like because is it called Minecraft World? Yeah. So what it is is uh, that you basically like you buy. The fact that I know this just hurts. Uh, you like buy a server, mm -hmm. and anyone from any platform can log on mm -hmm. and go to it. But the fact that it had to be Minecraft Worlds is a little off-putting. Ben, you know a lot about Minecraft, right? SHUT UP, MOM! <laughs> I don't need dinner! I need Minecraft! <laughs> GOD! <laughs> 
You make me so angry, Mom! Ah! The movie is oddly clever. Mm -hmm. Like, it's not, like we were talking on the pretentious part, it's not dumb. No, no, it's, uh... It's smart. From the, Dare uh, I say. It's the Black Panther for gamers, dare I say. <laughs> Uh, I, I do feel that the movie has a uh, like very clever bits. Uh, the the humor shared by the characters, uh, the interactions, uh, seeing the uh, the corporation and like the methods it's using to you know try and take over. Uh, it's like there's a mix of metaphors and just uh, plain old wit. That's uh it's really good in that sense. Uh, entertaining uh, and just fun to watch. No Nintendo. No Nintendo. It can also be noticed that because this movie was produced by Warner Brothers, yeah, uh, and Warner Brothers is a huge rival of Disney's, and uh, Warner Brother owns things, you know, it owns DC, yeah, it owns uh, Mortal Kombat, I and didn't it, even think about that, and it owns so many of these, you know, we love these franchises, yeah, and uh, it owns so many of them, and you'll notice that no Disney franchises are noticed. Because when they mention superheroes and uh, comics in general, it's, it's always, always, DC. always DC. I never thought and about that. And you, you see characters throughout the movie, or there's a, like a scene where uh, Artemis is disguised as Goro, and I got all giddy because I love Goro. Yeah. Uh, and there was a scorpion. Like scorpion is a beast. And there's that and Batman scene near yeah, the there's, beginning. Yeah. There's Batman. Uh, there's Harley Quinn who's yeah. uh, in the club. Yeah, and uh, if I noticed that when Harley Quinn is in the club, it's the um, it's the Arkham Knight. Skin, yeah, it's yeah. So which is uh, their game, the, the newest Batman game that's mm -hmm. released. That that was also uh, made yeah, by Warner more, Brothers the, games. The, the, uh, the more I think about it, like there is a lot of court. Like it's subtle. So, it's not. It's not a break. All the mm -hmm. corporate push, which they obviously had to put this in the movie, yeah. because their producers want them to mm -hmm. put it in the movie. It's not. It doesn't. It, it, they don't push that agenda at uh -huh. all. Yeah, uh, but you'll notice that the movie is so heav heavily licensed because of the characters it uses, and uh, and I'm sure that they would have included Disney just because of its uh, cultural relevance, but uh, I think that behind the scenes there were licensing issues, and that's why these characters uh, that weren't in, like, they don't they make no mention of Star Wars, uh, but there's yeah. also plenty of Star Trek. Right, yeah, like uh, at its funeral there's like mm -hmm, the Star and, Trek. Uh, the, uh, the creator of the game world uh, love Star Trek. You uh, see his childhood room, and there's posters everywhere. <laughs> and at his funeral, there's like flower, uh, flower mm -hmm. arrangements of like the Star Trek logo. Mm -hmm. uh, and I just think that's uh, there's nothing wrong with that. Uh, I just feel it's just, it just had to be done. There's no way to work around that. Yeah, just legal issues. Uh, it's just so no Nintendo, no Disney. Uh, I don't think that they were excluding Nintendo. I think that they very much wanted Nintendo mm -hmm. in there. I just think that um, uh, that it just Nintendo just likes to be by themselves. Mm -hmm. They just say no one ever since the and uh, not a lot of PlayStation characters either. Like uh, as far as like their exclusive. Yeah, there was a lot of Microsoft stuff. Yeah, there, there was there was, was a, there was a lot. There was like at the end fight, like a majority of the stuff I saw was like Halo mm -hmm. stuff or like Gears of War stuff. Mm -hmm. There was just a lot of that, especially in the end fight. So Microsoft. Put a lot of money down. Mm -hmm. um, Same with Blizzard. Uh, between Tracer, they uh, they had uh, forgive me for this, but I don't know the name of the main character in Starcraft. Yeah, mm -hmm. uh, and they had a lot of Blizzard characters. Uh, yeah, which was really cool. Blizz with the uh, with the female character Artemis, uh, I think she I think she's cool. Yeah, I it's, think it's a good character. It's not abrasive. Mm -hmm. It's not look at me, I'm female. Like yeah. a lot of like a lot of movies do now. It's not pretend. Mm -hmm. It's like it's just like it's a female character just because it's a character that happens to be a female. And that's yeah, it's and not that's how like you should write a character. It's uh -huh. not a female that is a strong protagonist. It is a strong protagonist that happens to be yeah a female. And that's how really all characters should, should be, be written. Should be written. Yeah. Like they just they are their own character and they just happen to be one or the other. Uh, one thing I notice is that uh, when she's saying you wouldn't like me in real life, you'd be disappointed. I'm thinking that she's gonna be, uh, like you know, a dude. Uh, like yeah, or yeah, a dude, or you know, heavily scarred, or like some kind of just like really cliche uh, stereotype of like ugliness, right? Yeah. Uh, but she's not. But she's what not happens is dude. in real life, she's actually really attractive. Yeah. And the thing that she's so acting so disappointed about, like you would be disappointed in how I look. Is because she has a birthmark over her eye. Yeah. And I'm sorry, but that's I, I don't think there's anything wrong with that. Yeah. I, she's still. I think that's the message. Attractive. I, I think that's the message that the movie's trying to push is that 
Like, you're still... Who cares if you have a scar on your face? Like, mm-hmm. like he fell in love with her. He fell... He, he, the main character fell in love with Artemis not because of her looks. Mm-hmm. It was because... Of her of, personality. Of her personality. And that happens a lot with people that date online. You fall mm-hmm. in love with their personality, not their looks. I, uh... I have one thing. Uh... And this is also nitpicky, but uh, in this video game world, you have so many avatars that are obviously, you know, licensed characters. Like, someone picked to look like Tracer, someone picked to look like Master Chief. Uh, And in the movie, all the main characters have custom-made avatars that are exceptionally easy to pick out in a crowd. Yeah. Uh, like well, they, they had to do that. They, they couldn't just blend in. Exactly. But the, but in the background, there's also not a lot of custom-made characters. Yeah. It, it is, it's like them and then licensed characters. Yeah. Um, uh, there were some custom-made characters, but I do have to say that with the main characters, especially with Artemis and what's the other guy's name? Uh, Parcival? Parcival, yeah. Their color palettes are really, really good. Mm-hmm. Whoever designed them... Um, did a really good job of keeping uh, the protagon- the main protagonist is all blue and Artemis is like reds, mm-hmm. reds and purples, and it looks really, really good. Mm-hmm. And the- there's just this consistency of quality. There's never there wasn't any part where I kind of like tilted my head and I said what like like they actually mm-hmm. did really well on all the CG. Mm-hmm. Oh, it looked good. Like they'll have a there was they'll no- have close ups like was- where they zoom yeah. in on their face and they rotate around the CGI character's face, or in some cases the real character's face. And you can't tell the and difference. It, it looks you don't, very you don't good. See- like I was wondering how did they get that that shot? Yeah. And then I realized that it's all done digitally, and it's really impressive. It's yeah, it's crazy. Like no one, there's not one, there's not one place where someone dropped the ball. Mm-hmm. The producers did a very good job of making sure that every scene, every frame was perfect. Mm-hmm. It was shot perfectly. Um, looking at the CG, uh, now experiencing the world of rendering, even with just basic video, mm-hmm. I could not imagine what like god computers they had to have to render all it, of that. It was it was unbelievable. It's yeah. one of the best looking movies I've seen in a while. Yeah. Oh, first act, uh, the first challenge, uh, the, yeah. the race. And the race is really cool. It was like heavily toted on, toted uh, in the trailer, mm-hmm. uh, and there's just these cool car sequences, yeah. there's these cool chase sequences, sequences, and it's just like a homage to racing games as well. Mm-hmm. Uh, but the whole point of the challenge is that you're not supposed to go forward and win the race. You're not supposed to get past Kong. You're supposed to go backwards. You're supposed to go backwards. Now it's clever, and it's like an interesting idea seeing him figure out this puzzle. Yeah. Figure out that's that, basically how all the challenges are. Yeah, like you have to. It's like underneath and you have to like go under do some uh, detective work uh, I just want to know that I just want to point out that when you have this competition has been going on for four years if yeah. four or five years yeah and in that entire time of pretty much the billions of players that no have one has done driven back no one's driven backwards and well, I, I just mean, would you think about that come on no no see I would think about that because you know uh, that's when, Mar- when, Mar- no, that's when Mario Mario Kart game. Wii came out and this was years ago, like, okay, yeah. it's like almost not even relevant at this point. But my sister would drive backwards around the track for multiple laps just for fun. Yeah. Uh, and well, if think- my little sister <laughs> thinks to just drive backwards, do you really mean to tell me that nobody's done it just on accident or just for kicks and giggles? Not trying to figure it out, not right. trying to think it through, but just like, it's a, it's a video game. You I can think, do whatever you want, think, there's nothing on the line, I think, I think and you just drive backwards. <laughs> well, there is something on the line, because you could die in the race. And you could die in the race, but I think I think the point was that everyone is so focused. Everyone is so focused on trying to win this race that they keep driving, and they never thought like because you're thinking, all right, I have to win this race, I have mm-hmm. to win this race. No one's going in there for fun. Everyone in there are See, the I feel egg like hunters. Pe- I feel not- like people would go in there for fun. At least when the game was first, when this game was first released, there were probably billions of players, yeah. and there were. And I'm sorry. I mean, that's it, kind of a nitpick, though. It is a nitpick, but I feel like it's a logical nitpick because you we see highlight videos of video games of like insane trick shots and all these crazy yeah. goofings well, I, think, off. I think that's the point like like, like and a person that actually really enjoys uh, video games would actually figure that out someone who is not there just mm-hmm. for the money not not these corporate shills there and there's someone who actually enjoys video games would actually drive back but the way he figures it out is he's doing detective work on a a one-liner that the creator of the game said years ago it's not by him using his own video gamer logic <laughs> I, gamer logic. <laughs> yeah, like no, there is a. If ga- you're a there, real gamer, there you is know a, to drive there is a backwards. gamer logic. <laughs> there is a gamer logic that exists. Uh-huh. Uh huh. And 
but that's not the thing. I I just feel that someone would have driven backwards, and I feel like Oop, they, game. they could have uh, done the challenge a little better. And again, it's based on the book. I like I, I, I honestly didn't have any problems with the challenges at all. That that's just me personally. There's, oh, there's, yeah. There's no nitpicking. I'm talking about how all of the main characters were white. No. No. No, because one of them is not white. They're all white. Like the three main characters, main villain, Parsival, and Artemis are all white. Who and cares? And then the rest of them. Who cares? Okay, so we're not doing that whole spiel about no. increasing diversity in cinema. No. Okay, just wondering. No, I don't have a problem with it. I'm just saying here's, that other people okay. would have. You know, other people decide you're actually keeping this in. Here's here's the thing about diversity in film, right? These actors are actors. Mm -hmm. I don't want a checklist to be like, I need the black lady, yeah. I need the Asian boy. There are, There is diversity in the film. Oh, of course. Uh, like the, uh, All of the, uh, the helping characters are, uh, are played by minority actors. Right. And, and I they're just, really good. They're very good. And, and I just don't care. I'm not saying I, I feel great that, that certain ethnic groups are... are, are Rising through the ranks, doing, uh, using the American dream to their advantage, and using mm -hmm. the, the way that the way that the the system in America is set up that you can work hard to get to a huge movie like like a, a, a like a major picture, mm -hmm. a major motion picture. But the thing is that like, there was no part where I sat there and said, "What if Artemis was was." was Armenian. Like, I'm not sitting there thinking <laughs> that, doesn't, that. That doesn't even change it, though. Like, like the parts... No, I'm not saying I had a problem with it. I'm saying that, uh, that the three main characters are white characters. I just they, don't they care. Are. Who cares? And they're straight white characters. Oh, my God. <laughs> There's no LGBT uh, re representation. This is true. Oh, who can Who ca Every movie cannot have a checklist of your... Uh, True, and again, uh, it's based on the book, so yeah, we, and, we can't, yeah. And there is this, it's not like it's, no. it's, and there's no part where like, like any of the African American characters or any of the, or any of the, the, the ethnicities go like, it's hard being this race, mm -hmm. just no one cares. Mm -hmm. And I think that's why I really like this movie, because there's mm -hmm. a lot of movies where they're like, I am a woman. I have problems, which women mm -hmm. do have problems, but a lot of times... These problems that, have problems because of uh, other reasons. Right, and, and, and these movies like to like to push... They've always... Movies have always pushed agendas, and I think that this one was nice is because it wasn't about... It wasn't about, like, a black man getting 20... A half a trillion dollars and winning video games. It was just about a dude, just some random dude, just mm -hmm. a, a from nothing dude, and I hate how we always put these... We try to put labels on on movies mm -hmm. and on people like that, and it just gets annoying. And I'm glad this movie doesn't do that. And mm -hmm. the diversity characters, they're not like I am the Asian boy. There's not there's none of that. The Asian characters do have stereotypical <laughs> avatars, and you can't deny that. <laughs> no, yeah. So if you guys if you haven't seen it, uh, the Asian characters are <laughs> they play a samurai and a ninja. <laughs> they play a samurai and a ninja. Uh, and and there's no pro. Okay, samurais and ninjas. They're and the bad. And they're the badass. And the, Jew the Jewish man plays the curator. <laughs> the Asian boy plays the samurai. There, there is that. Like it, it does exist. Look, I'm putting this on the table. Just a quote of the year. I don't care. <laughs> God. Who gives a donk? I just don't. Who cares? Low key feel we need to cut, cut this just to avoid controversy. It's fine. Well, what the six people that are gonna watch it and seven of it, seven of it's gonna be us. <laughs> <laughs> I want to talk about how the creator of the game, like his character in general, when I don't even I don't know who plays the creator of the game. Uh, Halliday is his name. Yeah. I don't know who plays him, but I just know that whenever that character was on screen uh, and not his not in really his avatar but more of uh, his real life character like his real life character I thought he was just really entertaining yeah I feel like the thing, he... the thing is that that um, a lot of game developers and stuff like that have things like uh, Asperger's or things that like kind of make them socially awkward mm -hmm. and like the people like people who are really successful in the tech world mm -hmm. 
they're kind of we- they're kind of weird. They're, kinda, they're, they're like, weird and quirky. Like, like 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 Mark Zuckerberg. Like he's just this weird, creepy robot that goes up on stage. Mm-hmm. Um, and this guy plays that role really well. He's not mm-hmm. he's not some corporate uh, chiseled face man. Uh, he's just some weirdo with with with, with curly a passion hair. for with a passion for video games. Yeah, and and, and when and when he's selling it, he's not the, he doesn't like. There's one part where uh, it's the first time unveiling the Oasis um, system and the VR headsets. And, like, the guy's just, like, uh, playing it up. And then he mm-hmm. just is like, let's stop talking about it and just look at it. Yeah. Uh, his character, it, it captures the uh, the heart and soul, I think, of, like, what video games should be. Like, yeah. they should be things that we can enjoy, things that we can play, uh, new things to discover. And uh, it, it's uh, touching and entertaining, I feel. Uh, his character is uh, just in the uh, the representation of a, of a video game creator. Yeah. And, yeah, uh, and I appreciate he, he, he that. Has, he has heart and soul for his mm-hmm. product. All right, this is going to be the spoiler discussion. So if you have not seen the movie yet, uh, or if you just don't want to hear about the ending yet, uh, I'll put a timestamp down below, and that's uh, that will be the next part, the five-word summary. So, mm-hmm. ending. Uh, corporate boy, he puts a shield around this castle mm-hmm. so that no one else I really liked the symbolism and the and the metaphor I was trying to say like this corporate guy is putting he's literally putting a wall a paywall kind of <laughs> like a paywall behind the content that people mm-hmm. want to get to mm-hmm. and it's relevant like it, it's the black it's the black panther for gamers let me <laughs> tell you it's true representation <laughs> of gamers yeah, uh, the glass ceiling is finally broken, and all the oppressed <laughs> groups shall rise, especially the, the most oppressed group of all, gamers. The yeah, the metaphor of uh, of corporations uh, in video games was really strong, especially in that part, uh, the paywall, like the paywall. Uh, um, he basically so 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 the so the antagonist, um, what's his uh, Sorrento? Sorrento, N- Nolan Sorrento, Nolan Sorrento, which is. Such a, it was Nolan or Nathan. Yeah, it was, was such a Sorrento. villain name. He 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 buys this orb that he puts around, and basically it's a shield that goes around. And this is in the video game world. Yeah, uh, <laughs> <laughs> he buys it's a shield that goes around. So like the last challenge is in like this castle. Mm-hmm. I don't. I'm not sure what I was referencing. I'm not sure if I, it I, was a reference at all. Uh, I know the world that it took place on was the uh, was the Doom world, right? Which was based on the video game Doom. No, Doom takes place on Mars. Well, it was called Doom World, and you were supposed to like. Fight was it? it? Yeah, it was like the like the world that they showed that the orc is fighting on in the beginning. Yeah. Uh, that's the the Doom World. Oh, okay. Like it's called like the Doom Shooter may- or something. Maybe may- okay. And I'm pretty yeah. sure it's in reference to Doom. Okay. I'm not sure. Well, uh, so there's this castle. He casts the spell, and there's an orb around it, uh, mm-hmm. and like, and the shield's impenetrable. And mm-hmm. he like he does things, and he and he cheats. He puts like he puts like bombs in the bridge, so that mm-hmm. way if people get past, he explodes so that no one can get there mm-hmm. uh, to to wedding. And the final challenge I thought was really cool. So first, there's like this lavaly. There's lavaly. That's not even a word. Lavaly. Add that to the dictionary. Uh, there is a uh, there's like lava, and then it's like ice. Mm-hmm. Like that could only be done in a video game. Like that. Yeah, that was that part was cool. and, ice is... and it was basically this Atari system, and people would play games, and then if it wasn't the right thing, they'd fall through the ice. Uh-huh. Uh huh. And then uh, so basically, uh, the main protagonist he says, "Everyone fight this corporate shill," and everyone's like, "Yeah." And, and then, then they fight. You, you see, you see in. his message go out. Uh, it's live like bro- broadcast across the entire video game world. Yeah. And he's saying that we, we need to stop this corporation from uh, taking over. You know what we love from which taking is, over our which home. Which literally happened from like, uh, especially with Star Wars Battlefront Two. People mm-hmm. protesting against. I'm not buying this game, even if they're gonna fix mm-hmm. the microtransactions. I'm just not supporting EA anymore. Mm-hmm. It's the like gamers that. against a corporation. Yeah, rise and uh, grind gamers. It's time to fight against our oppressors. It sounds Ready, bad, but Ready it... Player One is the Black Panther for gamers. I just wanna, I wanna give a shout out to my mom, cause she's my biggest supporter. She's my biggest fan. Thanks, mom, for making YouTube possible. So yeah, and then you know this message goes off, and then they have a dramatic pause of you know what, ten seconds. Yeah. And then you just see this uh huge group. This okay. huge group of what is it's got to be billions at this point. Billion billions of players who are I think, trying to like, help. Like they showed it in the real world, which I like is that they went from real world to 
to, to the Oasis. In the real world, like, there are people, like, the whole streets are filled with people, like, fight, like Yeah, fighting every, in VR. Yeah, everyone's and fighting. And it, it, it's really funny to watch, uh, and it would probably be chaotic. It would probably be um, terrifying. Yeah, but uh, there's people fighting this massive battle. And you see this uh, Lord of the Rings scale charge at the, uh, at the castle, and they do this wonderful uh, pan through the crowd, and, you know, one of the first people to charge in are, you know, the Battletoads. Yeah. Uh, and then you see, uh, like, it's a group of Spartans from Halo. Yeah, you yeah. see Tracer. You see an army of skeletons. You see uh, Walkers. Yeah. Uh, you see the Iron Giant. Yeah. Uh, and you see all these just wonderful little nods to, you know, childhood franchises that we loved. Uh, I love that kind of thing. And it wasn't like they were forcing it on us. It was just, like, quick scenes with characters that we like. Yeah. Uh, and it was just really was cool. It, was, it, was it in the middle of battle? It's like, look, it's Master Chief from Halo 6. Like, it wasn't like... No, <laughs> wasn't no, it was just like them. That. It was kind of them in the background, you know, firing and fighting. And uh, it was really cool. Yeah, I uh, really enjoyed it. Um, I At first, I did not like the ending of how... So, like... There's like this one item that you could buy, which they referenced earlier, which is smart. There's no, there's no Deus Ex Machina of all of a sudden this just happens. Mm -hmm. they, they did foreshadow it. They, 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 they foreshadow pretty much everything. Yeah, there's, there's, there's nothing without a question with, with foreshadowing. So like they, they were in an item shop and they talked about this one explosive that would kill everyone on the whole server, which is not fair in any way. Yeah, that, that, including the user of the weapon, it yeah. kills everyone. So it's. Um, but the thing is that, uh, uh, God, what's his name again? The Parcival. Parcival. Parcival has an extra life that he's been holding on to, and he didn't realize it was an extra life. Because it was just, he thought it was just a quarter that was flipped to him by the curator of a museum that he met earlier. Yeah. So, you know, he flips him this coin because it's like, this is the only amount of money I have. Yeah, and, and, and at, at first I thought that, that, I was like, this is a dumb ending. This is, this is stupid. How, how can mm -hmm. you? But then I was like, you know what they did? They did foreshadow it. They I, did. They did. It was. It was. It was. Uh, it was respectable. It was fine. Mm -hmm. The the editing was was good. Mm -hmm. I would say. I, I after thinking about it for about a day. Mm -hmm. And uh, the ending was a little stressful for me. Again, I had to go to the bed. <laughs> and it Real did. Real gamers. Have so to go pee. so maybe if I uh, if I watched <laughs> it again, I would enjoy it more. The ending did seem to draw draw uh draw on a little longer it did uh, i think because, that's what the pacing did cuz the uh, a little bit. the uh, cuz the epilogue was you know what they do now that they own the oasis yeah, the bad guy get it quick, the, the I bad think, guy I think getting was arrested really quick. yeah uh that seemed like a lifetime of you cuz you're just sitting there yeah it did it did uh and there were just some things that i felt were unnecessary to include in the ending uh I just think that they could have jumped straight to that. Like, they didn't need the whole formal signing thing. They didn't need, uh, they could just show him getting arrested. There was just a lot of extra dialogue that went on. Yeah. And, uh, there were It seemed were like pauses. they were trying to get that, like, 120 minute, uh... Yeah, like, just kind of, just kind of pad the runtime. Like, nothing major. It wasn't bad. No, it wasn't bad. It was just, like, maybe unnecessary. Yeah. If that makes sense. Yeah. Uh, I want to point out that uh, the uh, Parsival has a character by the name of Eight, like a friend that has uh, their avatar's name is H. Yeah. And they're this giant mechanical orc thing. Yeah, we called that, or you called that I twist. Call, now, I called this twist. Now, at the beginning of the movie, you know, they're talking about you can't reveal your name to somebody, you can't tell them who you are, where you live, etc., etc. And I, uh, I whisper over to my friend here uh, <laughs> that this orc dude is actually a girl. Yeah. And uh, I think I, that's what it was I, I leading up I to. I think I even said maybe a black girl. I, I, I said, Did you? I, I said that as a joke. Oh, gosh. Because, uh, and then, you know, later in the movie, they meet in real life. And we realize that uh, this character, who I thought was really funny, yeah. uh, was, like, a wonderful character. Uh, like, great one-liners, great, uh, great comedy parts. Uh, just really entertaining. Uh, but it was a girl. And, uh... I mean, I predicted it right off the bat. Apparently, yeah. so did you. I mean, I and, mean, uh, I, I and think, there's nothing wrong with it. Yeah, it was it's, just like it wasn't. It wasn't like oh, a huge twist. Like, yeah. like this, this movie doesn't. This movie doesn't break ground. It doesn't. It, it doesn't does, have any whammy endings. It, like, it, it's just like a really. It's not. It's, it's just an ending. Not, it's not like a Jurassic Park where it's or it's where it's breaking or a Star Wars where it's making a huge cultural change. Uh -huh. It's just. 
it, I don't want to say it's an average movie because it's mm-hmm. not an average movie. It's above average. It's above average, but not. It's not a ten out of ten. I would say it's like a nine or an eight. Mm-hmm. I I personally hate numbers for mm-hmm. ratings. That's just me personally. But if I was to give it a rating, it would be around like an eight or a nine. Yeah, I just want to point like there was no whammy ending, and the uh, the plot throughout uh, it was consistent. It was consistent. There was, there was no like there was really no high points or really low points. It was just yeah consistent. And uh, I also feel like it was for, I don't know. Again, it's based off of a book, uh, but I feel like it was less plot. There are some movies that are less plot oriented and more of like this. For a lot of the movie, it felt like a homage to other things. Yeah, but yeah, it's still, but yeah, it's still, but it's still, still entertaining. Yeah. Uh, so it's not like the greatest story ever told, but you, it's, a, you, it's a really basic story. If you yeah, boil it, it down, it's a, it's a basic it's a, story. Yeah. But you it go like, into this movie and there's so many things you can find to appreciate just so and many to enjoy. You, you, like you, you walk in and you're going to be, de- yeah. Yeah, there's details everywhere. Every mm-hmm. every frame, like I said, every frame is crafted perfectly. Mm-hmm. Like I, I need to go back and rewatch it because I feel like there's there's probably things that we missed. There's probably references we've only seen it the one time. We could have seen a Roblox reference. We, yeah, there could be a Roblox reference. <laughs> there Roblox. could be Fortnite references. We don't know. Yeah. All right. So now this is the part where we do the uh, five word summary, where we summarize the movie in five words. I got mine. Ready Player One isn't dumb. Ready Player One colon clever nerdy. Wow, that was actually pretty good. My name is Josiah Shoemaker, and this has been On the Couch. Thank you for watching. We did it, Benjamin. We did it. We we made a video. And now my mom won't beat me.